Hey everybody, I'm here today to talk to you about four of the worst things that you can do to your car. You can do a lot of bad things to your car, but these are definitely four of the absolute worst things that you can do to your vehicle. Let's get right to it. Number one is get the interior of your car significantly wet. Now it's one thing if it's winter outside and you walk in with wet boots. That's one thing, that's normal, that will dry up rather quickly. But I'm talking about significantly wet. I'm talking about having a one liter bottle of water in your hand and it drops on the floor and soaks up into the interior carpet. I'm talking about driving through a puddle. I'm talking about leaving your windows open or your sunroof open when it's raining. I'm talking about significantly wet. What happens when you get your car significantly wet is that it takes a long time to dry up and lots of mold and bacteria can actually form in the car. It also promotes rust. So literally the slew of bad things that can happen when you get the interior of your car significantly wet simply make it not worth it to take the risk and get the interior of your car wet if you get the interior of your car wet dry it as much as possible as quickly as possible the best thing that you can do is literally take care of the moisture as soon as you can and as aggressively as you can in order in an attempt to dry it up that's the best thing that you can do if you happen to get the interior of your car wet number two Two is ignore a leak now sometimes you might have a leak with your windshield wiper fluid and you see your windshield wiper fluid on the floor and you know that it's not that huge of a deal but the problem is that not only are you gonna be losing windshield wiper fluid up to a certain degree and constantly losing the fluid, but the problem is that if you develop another leak in the car, you might not actually notice it because you might see some drips underneath your car and just assume that it's windshield wiper fluid when in reality it could be fluid for your cooling system. In reality, it could be oil. There could be many different things that are mixed together. So with that being said, that's why it's really not a good idea to ignore a leak because it might not only be the leak that you're ignoring that you're dealing with. It might start off as a simple leak and you may think that it's just that continual leak, but meanwhile, it could be something more important, more significant. You might think that you're ignoring something that doesn't matter, but in reality, it is actually something that actually matters. So that's why it's really not a good idea to ignore a leak. Number three of things, uh, four things of the, of the worst things that you could do to your car is driving with low tire pressure, okay? So if you drive with low tire pressure and you know that you're driving with low tire pressure, you could actually be doing some serious damage to the sidewalls of your tires. And not only is that bad for the tires, but it can actually be quite dangerous because your tires can actually suffer from a blowout eventually, which can be really dangerous and can leave you stranded on the road. So if you know that your tire pressure is low, stop at a gas station, pump it up ASAP. It's relatively inexpensive, it's very cheap. Most gas stations only charge like one or two dollars for air and you can pump up your tire, okay? Better yet, go ahead and buy one of those pumps that you can leave in your trunk and connect to the accessory socket of your car. And you don't even have to pay a gas station to pump up the air in your tire. You can pump it up yourself anywhere. And that not only will save you from getting stranded on the road most likely, but it'll also save you from damaging your tires because, uh, because you're driving with low tire pressure. So definitely avoid driving with low tire pressure. The moment that you notice that you're, you have low tire pressure, just put some air in the tires. It's such a simple fix. Lastly, and not leastly, number four, that didn't really make sense. Number four is driving with the check engine light on or any type of dashboard light on. Now, right now on my dash, I have a low windshield wiper fluid, windshield wiper fluid light. And I've been driving with it on for about two hours and I'm gonna go ahead and put windshield wiper fluid in because I really don't like any dashboard lights being illuminated. But I'll tell you right now, some people drive with the check engine light on and they think it's a simple problem, but in reality, the check engine light is on because of four or five problems. And with that being said, they think it's something so simple, but there are many other problems. So the best thing that you can do is solve the problem that is causing the light on your dashboard to illuminate. Now, there are other lights on your dashboard that might illuminate that you might dismiss as being not a huge deal, but it could be your SRS airbag light. It could be your ABS light. And with all of that being said, it's a really good idea to solve those lights as quickly as you can, because those are some things that you really do not want to fail on you when you're driving. Airbags 
and uh, and your ABS brakes. So with that being said, it's a really good idea to solve any problems that are causing your engine lights or your dashboard lights to illuminate. But that's basically it. In this video, I've gone over four of the worst things that you can do to your car. Avoid these four things at all costs. And that's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching.